Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation on a game night Friday. All night. First of two against seventh ranked UC Irvine. For I've been looking forward to this BYU one for a while. Volleyball. Oh, yeah, let's yeah. go. And to help us preview the matches is star Luke Benson with us in Studio B. Luke. Or Ben Lukeson, as Steve <laughs> was jokingly calling. What's up, Luke? How are you doing, man? How are you guys? We're doing well, man. Uh, how would you sum up just the last week for you you and BYU Volleyball? Four matches in five days, and now you got UC Irvine on a Friday. It's been crazy. It's been so crazy, but that's exactly what we want. We just want to play as much as we can. We just need to be as good as we can by, by April, May when really matters. And I think that just playing as much as possible really helps us with that. I know we didn't get, like, we didn't get many preseason matches, so getting all the matches possible during our season really helps us a lot. So. Seven and one so far. Uh, you guys have made a, a setter change and you're 4-0 since that and 12 and one in those sets. Uh, what difference has Tyler Hergett made in, in uh, running the show the last four matches? It's been so awesome. He's, he's really easy to hit off of. He distributes his offense pretty well. It's, it's just it's so awesome to hit off of him and his serve is just amazing. It's been such like so monumental in our past few games. And yeah, he's really, really good at just yeah getting the ball where it needs to be, getting us up there, and making us kind of able to hit the ball. So. Nine aces in the last five. That'll do. Ooh, yeah, wow, absolutely. Now this team did some nice things late last season, and Sean Olmstead said, hey, "We've got some momentum. We think we're better than where we were picked in the preseason AVCA poll, which is number nine. You're up to number eight. How do you feel like the team is better, not just in the rankings, but just the way you play the game?" Yeah, so I, I really feel like something that we talk about a lot is how we have like a really deep roster. Like we can we can throw people in if they need to be thrown in. And I think that's just amazing because not a lot of teams have that. You look at some other teams and they just don't have that depth. Like if someone's playing bad, they're kind of just stuck in the game. You don't really have someone you can throw in in their place. Whereas for us, we, we have a lot of people that can come in and get the job done if they need to. And a guy like Tyler Hergett. Exactly. And John yeah. Stanley yes. started yeah. for the first time Tuesday and did a nice job. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's just so cool how we have, like, not just one or two, but we have t tons of these guys that can come in, really just get the job done if they need to. In uh, the, two, the two sweeps, you had 21 kills Monday, Tuesday, were sprinting. Hit 571 three aces. You feeling it right now? You feeling pretty good? Yeah, I mean, I think there's stuff that I definitely need to improve on. I think my serving could be a little better and passing could definitely be better. But I think that, yeah, starting off in a good spot for sure. Definitely have stuff to work on. But, yeah, I think definitely feeling pretty good. I think everyone's feeling pretty good. Definitely, definitely we're kind of starting to feel it after a long week. But I think we're more ready than we've ever been, so. You've had two whole days off, Luke. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> two whole days. Six and nine by the end of the weekend. Have you guys done anything special to sort of maintain, uh, you know, your, your bodies here? This is a pretty tough stretch. Honestly, personally, I have since I've been, I've had, I've had back issues since, since spring of last year. So I've been doing stuff, and then some other guys have been having some issues too, and they're really doing everything they can to just really feel top-notch for this match. And, I think it's awesome to see everyone really putting in their best effort to feel as good as they can, to be as ready as they can. So, yeah, it's awesome to see. Okay, I have a unique question, and this is based off something Coach Olmstead told me. Yeah. And the Air Jordan 13s you wear during matches. Yeah. You told me after uh, the early matches against Ball State, I had to glue the sole back on at one point. But they're like, it's like they're your lucky <laughs> shoes. And Sean's like, I've been giving him like all these new shoes. And he just shows up in the same shoes. What is it superstition? Like, what do they feel better? What, what's the they, deal? They just feel better. So funny enough, actually, after the first Princeton game, I ordered a new pair. Let's go. So I, finally, I finally got finally a Finally gave pair. in. They're 13s again, of course. But, <laughs> but yeah, I did have to get new ones because last year in our Stanford game, the the left one, the sole came completely unglued <laughs> on the back. So it was just in the fifth set, uh, just kind of like flopping around. around there, <laughs> trying to play on that. So, yeah, luckily they're getting replaced. And you're still but. playing well. That says something about your game, man. You Thank finished you. the match with it flopping around? Yes. Yeah, so uh, last year, last match, <laughs> I got done. It was just completely separated on the back. Oh, my gosh. And then you glued it. I did re-glue it and like, I've been playing like, on them. What kind of glue we use? Gorilla glue, wood glue? What are we using? So here? I was using super glue for the most part, which I was surprised <laughs> I was holding to be honest. And, and then I got like some actual sh like sole glue and put it on. It's been 
holding pretty well. I don't, I'm not in the shoe glue game. I didn't hey. know there was soul glue, but now I do. A well-deserved new pair of shoes. Yeah, good, <laughs> good for you. He's uh, Heismaning <laughs> all these new ones. Give me the Jordan 13. Hey, with those new shoes on, you try and extend an 18-match home winning streak tonight. What does the Smithfield House do for BYU Volleyball? It honestly, like, it's the most amazing place ever. Like, we go to all these places. They have these huge stadiums, these basketball stadiums. Places like USC, UCLA, Stanford, and it's crazy. Like you go in there, it's just huge. But the thing about the field house is, it's just like it's just so like nostalgic. It's volleyball's always played in there, and it's just so awesome because we just like we pack it. It's crazy. There was games last year where you'd look and there's people sitting all the way back up on those wooden seats up there, and it was just the coolest thing to see. Like it was, it was just amazing, and I think that it kind of. It kind of also makes it harder for other teams to play against us because it just it feels so packed in there. When in reality, like you put that in one of you put that many people in one of those other schools kind of gyms, and it just it wouldn't feel the same. Yep. Yeah. Yep. No, it's uh, it's it's what it's like uh, when you're in there, right? And there's TerraFlex, which is the Olympic style floor, right? There's the mile per hour gun, which is fun, which you put yeah. out an 80 mile an hour <laughs> serve last year, dude. We we were at the uh, football alumni game and and scrimmage and so we missed that one but it was like what an 80 mile an hour? <laughs> was that the fastest serve you've ever had oh yeah yeah by like four miles an hour <laughs> like the fastest i served outside that was like maybe 76 but. and it was in for an ace because if you go 80 into the net who cares yeah right yeah. <laughs> but it was in um what did you feel like in that moment actually connecting at 80 miles an hour on a serve i'm gonna be honest i thought i tossed it too far and i thought it was going way out like i'm <laughs> like i'm gonna be totally honest i was just like okay I'm just going <laughs> to see what I can do with this. And then seemed to work pretty well. So, yeah, it was it was crazy, though. It was like after I hit, I just could not believe it. I was like, there's no way that's right. But <laughs> <laughs> anything above 70 is oh, cooking. <laughs> dude, anything in the 60s is cooking. Yeah, like, so do you have, yeah. like, a mark that you're trying to hit? Is there a happy medium there? Because we, we heard Sean say, I saw 81 or 82 in practice this year, and I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> like, so what, what's, what's, like, the happy medium there? Honestly, something I've been noticing is it doesn't. It honestly doesn't even need to be in the 70s to be getting aces. Like I think a lot of like the aces I've got this year have been like maybe in the 60s, if that. Like the, I know there was one the second night against Princeton. I just kind of roll shot it in. They just, I guess they thought it was going out and just kind of didn't go for it. So it's like something I've been realizing a little bit is it's almost better to just put the ball in, trust your team to block it than it is to be blasting every ball out of bounds, kind of. So, yep. yeah. Love that approach. Luke, great to have you in Studio B. Good luck tonight. Take some BYU Sports Nation karma. Thank you. Rock those beautiful new Air Jordan 13s tonight. <laughs> they're, getting, they're getting here next week. So. Yeah, Jeremy's going to have a great oh, yeah. seat. Hey, 10 match home, uh, home streak. We'll have plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Thank Thanks, you. Okay, 18 match.